Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. Today we're taking a look at a red-green or gruel ramp deck that is trying to go big and cast giant creatures to kill the opponent with. So let's get started here with our 1-drops where we have a few copies of Fiery Impulse, 2 damage to target creature and 3 damage with Spell Mastery. So just an early interactive card in a deck full of expensive cards, so it's important to have that early interaction. Then we're also playing a Gate Creeper Vine, an O2 Defender that searches up a basic land or a gate, so we make sure that we keep hitting our land drops, and also an early roadblock that can block a creature from the opponent to gain us some life, and later we can also sacrifice it to Evolutionary Leap. And Elvish Visionary fills the same role, but instead of finding a land, draws us a random card, and a 1 1 that can also attack and block and we can sacrifice them both to Evolutionary Leap that can find us more powerful creatures and also nice against removal spells if the opponents try and remove our big creatures we can sacrifice them and hopefully find another one. We're also playing Nissa, which fits perfectly into a deck that's trying to ramp its lands as it will be very easy to find 7 lands to transform her into Nissa Sage Animist which provides card advantage and can put pressure on the opponent and their ultimate is also quite devastating. We also have a one-off Reclamation Sage that can deal with problematic artifacts or enchantments and we can also search her up with our copy of Woodland Bellower. We're also playing with Exquisite Firecraft, so 4 damage to target creature or player and with Spell Mastery this becomes uncounterable. So 4 damage is a lot since it will deal with most problematic creatures in the format and can also go to the opponent's face to finish them off. Then we get to Nissa's Pilgrimage which is the only actual ramp card in the deck as it will put an additional land into play as well as one into our hand. So we can go from 3 mana on the 3rd turn to 5 mana on the 4th turn so we can start casting our 5 drops a turn sooner which is quite powerful. And of course with Spell Mastery we get a third forest as well, which is nice. Then we're also playing with Pia and Kiran Nalar, a very powerful and versatile creature that makes two Thopter tokens that we can sacrifice to deal damage. And those also interact nicely with a card like Evolutionary Leap since we can just sacrifice the Thopters or Pia and Kiran and we'll have multiple creatures to sacrifice to find even more creatures. We also have Kurt Chieftain, which most of the time will be a 4-4 creature with a very powerful activated ability for 4 and a green. A creature will get plus 2 plus 2 and trample until end of turn. So this makes it difficult for the opponent to just chump block or large creatures since we can just give them trample and ignore possible blockers. And we'll have plenty of mana to use this ability so we can maybe even use this twice. We also have a Zendikar Incarnate, which is the multicolor card in this deck. So the power is equal to the number of lands we control. So most of the time this will be a 4-4 and then it will just grow from there and become a very large threat for the opponent and synergizes nicely with the Kurt Chieftain as we can give it Trample. We also have Amber Maw Hellion, another big creature, 4-5 Trampler. That also makes our red sources deal more damage, which is nice. And also Outland Colossus, another large creature, 6-6 six, six with Renown 6, so if it connects with the opponent becomes a 12-12 and can only be blocked by one creature. And again, the Chieftain synergizes very nicely with the Colossus. Chandra's Ignition is a great card in this deck as we'll have a lot of giant creatures to target and they'll deal damage equal to their power to each other creature and each opponent. So your other creatures might also die, but if you can clear the board and attack with that same giant creature you can sometimes even win on the same turn that you cast the ignition. And works very nicely with Outland Colossus as it will clear the way to become renowned. Then we have the one copy of Woodland Bellower, which we mentioned, can grab Elvish Visionary, Gatecreeper Vine or the Reclamation Sage. 
and then one copy of Gaia's Revenge just against the uh, control decks. This is a very powerful threat. And then we get to our mana base where we're running nine mountains, eight forests, two rootbound crag, a copy of Rogue's Passage which can make our giant creatures unblockable. We can't target our Gaia's Revenge since it can't be targeted by non-green abilities. So that doesn't work but works perfectly fine on our other giant creatures which we have a lot of. And then also four copies of Gruul Guildgate. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how it does. Alright, let's take a look at our opener which is lacking green mana, so I don't think we can keep this. Alright, this hand has some potential. It is missing some early interaction besides the impulse, like a 2-drop, but it does have some powerful combos here. It has Hellion or Colossus plus Ignition is pretty much game over. And if we are up against an aggressive deck, the impulse is going to be very valuable. Swamp, alright. And Nissa's Pilgrimage is an awesome draw here, since we'll be able to play our 5 drops on turn 4. And if our opponent doesn't have an answer to those, he's going to be in big trouble. Green-Black, Evolutionary Leap, alright, so this is the green-black controly value deck with flashback marauders, elvish visionaries and finishers like Gaia's Revenge so it is kind of problematic that we're weak to flashback marauder we didn't find any of our two drops to protect us from a flashback but so be it get two forests if we do draw another creature that's cheaper next turn I could consider playing them first otherwise we're just gonna run out our weakest 5 drop which is probably the Amber Maw Animus Awakening that's not a very good card let's see if our opponent hits hits one forest and then the Acid Moss which is a land destruction slash ramp card so our opponent might be on a more land destruction-y deck than we thought all right so if our opponent has flashback that's bad for us if he doesn't he's gonna take a lot of damage here so let's find out Five mana and there's an acid moss which we don't care about at all I guess it's gonna stop us from casting another five drop but not the biggest problem all right so our opponent did not have a flashback so we can attack and I think we just go mountain colossus there's not a ton of stuff that can punish us here and next turn we can just play the ignition and that's probably gonna be game so let's see if our opponent has two flashbacks here or at least one removal spell or maybe his own big creature animus awakening four six all right our opponent's going big here finds a one land there's a flashback plus crew revival so it is the value deck we were expecting only it's also playing awakening and acid moss acid moss i can get behind awakening is not a very good card and let's see here so we attack with both that's 10 and then we just ignition the colossus post combat so we don't kill our Hellion and that's gonna be game so let's try that opponent goes to six 
Colossus is renowned and there's no one mana removal spell we need to play around. So target the Colossus. And bang, that's game. Let's move on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which only has one land, so let's try another one. Again, I think this is a little too risky. And this hand's fine. So lead with a mountain pass a turn. Next turn we get to play Gatecreeper Vine and find another forest. Opponent on Foundry Street Denizen. So let's see if we'll have to block or not. Find another mountain. So if our opponent does make this have two or more power, we have to decide if we want to block with the vine to prevent that damage or if we want to keep the vine to possibly block a one power creature multiple turns which might save us more life in the long run so second denizen i think i'm fine taking two damage here since our opponent could have a dragon fodder next turn which if we block next turn we can save one more damage and if he doesn't have another creature, then we can just block a 1-1. So here, we could just use a Firecraft on a Denizen, and I think that's actually fine. Seems like a bad investment here, spending 3 mana on a 1-drop. But we're playing against a very aggressive deck with even Rogue's Passage, so we need to prevent as much damage as we can, and then try to close out the game with a card like Kurt Chieftain. So there's an Arsonist, which we can block with our Gatecreeper Vine, but next turn we're also going to have the Chieftain available to block. Uh, that being said, I think it's still fine taking two damage here. We could also draw an Evolutionary Leap at some point, which we want to have creatures for. Titan strength here is gonna hurt, but I think that's still fine. Don't really need to draw more lands here, but that's the way it is. Play the Chieftain, pass the turn. And now it's gonna be interesting if our opponent still attacks, if he has removal for this or not. Firecraft would probably be the worst for us, since that's the best answer to a Chieftain. If our opponent has a Titan Strength, that's at least gonna trade for another creature. So I think we can just wait another turn since we have nothing else going on to use the Pump ability to try and save the Chieftain from uh, a combat trick. They both attack, so I'm expecting our opponent to have a trick of some sort. So I'm just gonna block the Arsonist here and let the one damage through. If they use another Titan Strength, that's also fine. So they're gonna hit us for four here. And scry one. So we drop to nine. But next turn we can block and pump with the Chieftain. Infectious Bloodlust post-combat, interesting. So doesn't want it to get removed in response. Let's just play a land, no need to show the Rogue's Passage yet. And let's see, we could attack with the Chieftain and then use the Pump ability on the Gate Creeper Vine. But given that our opponent has this Bloodlust, I'm actually fine with blocking the Arsonist with the Vine and then pumping the Vine. So that I think that's what I'm gonna do. And then we can block the Denizen with the Chieftain if our opponent has a third Titan Strength. That's gonna be bad for us, but so be it. Pretty far away from activating the Rogue's Passage here. Alright, the Scout is gonna make the denizen unblockable 
can't target the arsonist here, so... Attack with both. So, let's see. If we block with the Chieftain, then our opponent, let's see, has a strength. One from the Arsonist. So I think it's still fine blocking with the Gate Creeper Vine here. And then pumping it with the Chieftain. And then our opponent has to decide if he wants to ping the Vine for one or us for one. Instead it's going to be Fiery Impulse in response, killing the Vine. Which I guess is still fine. So we take two, go to eight. But we still have a Chieftain. And we have a second Chieftain as well. So the problem here is if we block the Arsonist, the one damage is going to finish off the first Chieftain. So if we want to play the second one, we're giving up the first one basically, because we can't really afford to take another three damage from this. That being said, I don't think we have a great alternative just keeping this back and pumping it. But then our opponent still gets him for three damage here, so let's just play the second Chieftain and pass the turn. And see if our opponent has any relevant spells left. Goes to combat. They all come in. So let's block like this. We could also block the denizen if we expect our opponent to have a lot of creatures left. But I think this is fine. No combat tricks. And our opponent decides to ping us for one instead of the Chieftain, finds another Bloodlust. So this probably means our opponent has a bunch of burn spells in hand. Exquisite Firecraft, so we go to one life here. Alright. If our opponent has a Twin Bolt, then he should have just finished off one of the Chieftains since Twin Bolt's still gonna kill us. Um, so I'm not sure why our opponent did that. Maybe as a second Arsonist in hand, which can deal another one damage. Find Forest. So here I think we just want to pump one of the Chieftains and attack with both, which is 10 damage, which is a tur two turned clock. And then just rely on the Vine on defense, although we know our opponent has another Bloodlust in hand. So if he goes Creature into Bloodlust, we want to have a second blocker available. So maybe we just attack with one Chieftain and leave the second one on defense. This is tricky. Yeah, I think we just attack with one. It's the safer play. And if our opponent has a burn spell, we're dead anyways. And here I'm fine pumping here, instead of pumping the Vine or the Chieftain. And let's see if our opponent has a Twin Bolt. He does, alright. Oh well. We didn't really draw particularly well there. Got a lot of lands and not a ton of interaction. But so be it. Let's move on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which looks pretty good, so we'll keep. We have an early vine plus leap to sacrifice it. The pilgrimage for ramp and then a chieftain as our threat. So this hand is pretty much all angles covered. Lead with a guild gate up against blue black, so it could be a control deck. Alright, Hinterland Harbor. So, Sultai colors so far. Let's play a forest and play the vine. 
which will grab it's not super relevant i guess we'll just get a mountain since we have the pilgrimage which searches for forests and pause the turn so it's still unclear what type of deck our opponent has all right starfish means it's gonna be a more controlling slow deck allows our opponent to scry one every turn so a lot of card selection and hellion is not a bad draw so here we can just play the pilgrimage and next turn cast an hellion a turn sooner which seems pretty good If we're expecting a lot of removal, we could have also just um, played the leap to then play chieftains with leap mana up, but then we would have have to wait two more turns, so that doesn't seem great. I think it's fine just playing the Hellion. Most removal that's gonna kill it costs five mana, so our opponent's two turns away from that. And we have Flashback Marauder defense with the Gate Creeper Vine. So yeah, let's just slam down this Ember Maw. And uh, hope this Jace doesn't do too much work. Opponent's gonna activate the Starfish. And we'll pause the turn. So still not clear what the green mana is for. Could be playing a card like Bounding Crisis, but that doesn't really fit into a control shell. Although I guess the ability to play it at instant speed with Flash makes it more attractive if you're playing with counter spells. So our opponent could have some counter spells in hand, but most of them cost 4 mana. And if we're playing against the 3 mana counter spell here, we can just play the leap, which dodges that. So we're put on discarding Zenicard's Royal, so that's a neat win condition for a more controlling deck. Starfish, so we're putting really looking for a specific card here. Probably should have scryed before using Jace's ability, but who knows. So I think we just attack first, there's no removal spell I'm worried about. And then if our opponent does something, when we attack, we can play Chieftain post-combat to dodge a counter spell. If he doesn't do anything, we just play the leap and pause the turn, I think. Since our opponent is pretty clearly indicating that he has a counter spell up. And if it's the three mana variety we can dodge it next turn if we have uh, seven lands for the chieftain so i'm just gonna play the leap here and that resolved huh interesting so yeah let's just pause the turn here we do need to be careful not to sacrifice our vine and then be exposed to a flashback. So Jace activates. And there's the counterspell I mentioned. Our opponent discarding it because we were playing around it potentially. Alright, and there's the removal spell so now we get to use the leap to sacrifice Ember Maw. Finds Visionary, and I think next turn we can just play Chieftain plus Visionary, so it's fine to sacrifice the Vine as well, which finds an Incarnate, which is also nice. So your opponent could potentially transform Jace next turn, and then flashback Cruel Revival. Although I guess he needs one more card in the graveyard. 
So let's see here. Another land. Um, so I think we just play Chieftain plus Visionary. And we'll be able to keep up one activation as well. But let's play Visionary first to see what we draw. Pia and Kieran, interesting. So I still like playing the Chieftain here since we have two of them. And Pia and Kieran is better if our opponent has a Languish right now because that gives us more creatures to sacrifice to the leap, while we only have one mana here to activate the leap in case our opponent does have the Languish. And even if he does cast Languish, he will lose at least a Starfish. Sixth land. Jace activates, so he's not gonna transform this turn since he needs five cards in the graveyard for that. All right, there's a Perilous Mirror gone. So our opponent likely has removal for the Chieftain. So we could sacrifice the Visionary here. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. If our opponent had removal here, he could have played it in response, but he didn't, so likely on counter spells. All right, so we've got a lot of action here. Now let's start by attacking and see what happens. I'm not gonna pump. Opponent's gonna block and use a starfish. So this looks like our opponent has a languish here, which is fine. So we don't really want to play too much into it, if possible. So unfortunately we can't play one of our four drops and protect it with the Chieftain's ability. We could just play Pia and Kieran and then have a ton of mana up to use the Evolutionary Leap to just find a ton of creatures which sounds reasonable. Play Pian Kieran. Does it get countered? It doesn't. So let's just pause the turn and see if our opponent does indeed have a Languish. Otherwise he probably doesn't just get rid of the Starfish like that. Reef Soul instead. Um. So we could here use Pia and Kieran to kill the Jace. But then he can just use Jace in response to transform it. So yeah, maybe last turn we should have just used Pia and Kieran to kill the Jace right away. Because now it's kind of too late. So I think we just sacrifice Pia and Kieran. So our window of killing Jace is gone, but I think we can overpower Jace just by playing more creatures. So Jace activates and then we're gonna see Languish most likely. So yeah, maybe we should have uh, killed the Jace when we could. Jace transforms. All right, that's fine. And there's a Languish, all right. So now we get to sacrifice our creatures. Visionary. Sacrifice that. Reclamation Sage. Sacrifice this. Find another Visionary. So our opponent can flash back this Languish next turn, 
Can also flash back Cruel Revival. So we don't want to play too many creatures into that. Let's see. So we have 9 mana available, so we could play Chieftain plus Activated, but then our opponent just flashes back a Cruel Revival. Um, so I think we just start by playing a Visionary here. Which draws Pia and Kirin. So then our opponent's forced to use another language, and then we can just play a bunch of four toughness creatures. Um, and if he does flashback language, we could also just use Pia and Kirin to kill the Jace. Or no, that's gonna be on. So it would put Jace on one loyalty, which is not quite enough. But I think this is fine. So we'll have to discard here. And I think we discard the leap. It's bad if our opponent has a Reclamation Sage. Um, and then we also get rid of... Probably just the Reclamation Sage. I don't think our opponent has a ton of targets for it. And see what happens here. So we're not gonna run out of cards anytime soon. Nissa. So let's see. Nissa gets a land, our opponent plays a land. And then we can shoot down Nissa if we want to. And Jace targets Pia and Kieran, which is fine. Our opponent still hasn't played a land, plays Flashback Marauder, which is also fine. We'll just sacrifice the Elvish Visionary. And opponent goes to Anstep. And here I think we just use P and Kirin to kill Nissa. Alright, Woodland Bellower is also nice since that will survive Languish. Um, let's see, 6, 9 mana. So we could play Visionary and hope to find a Gaia's Revenge. Otherwise we could play Chieftain and leave up its activation. Either way we're gonna attack Jace here. And I guess we just play the Bellower, since that will also survive a Languish. And then we can uh, get the Visionary. Outland Colossus is also a nice one. So if our opponent plays Languish, plus a way to let us sacrifice a creature, that's pretty bad for us here. I don't think I want to play another Chieftain or an Incarnate here, as those all die to Languish and our opponent can flash it back with Jace. So I think we just pause the turn here. And see what happens. Alright, our opponent has his own Gaia's Revenge. Which I think is gonna stay on defense here. Alright, this gets minus two, that's fine. And I don't think, let's see. We can use P and Kieran, put Jace to 5. Yeah, I think we just are fine passing. We have plenty of spells to cast. Um, so here... I like playing Chieftain and using its ability so we can attack Jace with 
these two. And if our opponent blocks, we just use the Chieftain's ability to pump. So Jace takes some damage. And our opponent can flash back a Languish next turn, so we're not gonna play anything else, just keep up evolutionary leap mana. And then we just get to play Outland Colossus plus Incarnate. And that should do the job. So Jace targets Languish. And is gonna play the Languish. We could have been more aggressive last turn and also attacked with Piankiran and the Elvish Visionary. Um, but then maybe our opponent doesn't block and then plays a second guy's revenge out of nowhere. Who knows. So we're gonna get two more creatures, which is good. All right, so now we get to play Incarnate. Colossus. All right, Colossus gets dismissaled. I guess we could have played around this by uh, sequencing our spells differently. But our opponent has one card left. Uh, let's see, do we play the Visionary or keep up Evolutionary Leap? Let's play Visionary. Nissa is a nice one. Alright, so does our opponent have removal or not? If he doesn't, he's in trouble. Also got to scry to. All right, there's Liliana, another planeswalker. So no removal for the incarnate. So now we get to play the chieftain, pump the incarnate. Um, but first, I think we just play the. Let's see, nine. Play the Nissa. We do have some forests left. Play a forest. Transform Nissa. And I think we plus her here. Final land. And now we get to play the chieftain. Attack Jace with the Incarnate so that he doesn't get to flash back another Languish. And if our opponent blocks, we just use the Chieftain's ability. Opponent doesn't block, so now we even have Languish Insurance if our opponent top decks the second Languish so we can protect our creatures. So there's no need to play anything else here. Just pause the turn. And their opponent is going to have a very hard time coming back from this. There's a Languish, so did top deck his probably best card. But we're just going to save the Incarnate here. And Liliana also dies. And now we just get to play a land. Nissa's Pilgrimage. And put this on the battlefield tapped. Don't put anything into our hand. Do the same here. So we'll have 16 lands in play. 
and then we can just attack with the incarnate and kill our opponent in one hit while if we put the last forest into our hand we couldn't have played it so we were one short but by playing the second pilgrimage and putting the second land in play we have a 16 and that's gonna do it all right i want to thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this gameplay and as always have a nice day